Hey guys, Chris Morano here, and I'm here for another video all about Facebook ads specific to the naming convention that we use at our agency. So the reason for this video is kind of random, but I was building out a campaign for a Shark Tank product. So pretty cool, our agency won a bid on a Shark Tank product. So as we're building out this campaign, it's so immense. We have to be super specific and organized in terms of how to name our ads, our campaigns and our ad sets so that as the data starts coming in, we're easily able to identify which ones are good, which ones are bad, which images worked, which ad copy worked, which audiences worked. And so that's what this video is gonna be all about. So stay tuned. Hey guys, my name is Chris Morano. I'm the Chief Executive Officer at Blue Water Marketing, an agency here in sunny South Florida that specializes in Facebook ads, Google ads, and search engine optimization. So as I was mentioning, when you're running multiple campaigns, you have multiple ad sets within those campaigns, and then even more so, you have a ton of ads. How are you supposed to distinguish relatively easily which ones are working and which ones are not? And so in this video, I'm gonna break down our three top of the funnel, middle of the funnel, bottom of the funnel, naming conventions that we use at our agency. So the key to this is understanding first, which phase of the funnel is the campaign. So we like to say tofu, top of the funnel. For middle of the funnel, it's mofu, bofu. And then we also have re-engagement naming conventions, but we won't get into that. Let's just stick to the main Three. So for our tofu campaigns, which I hate tofu, but that's what we call it. It's going to be tofu, our client name. So whatever your business name is, then we go to language. What language are we targeting? So in this regards, we're going to use an abbreviation of English, EN. So as we're going into the naming convention, one of the key things to remember is like, sale 20% off is not a sufficient naming campaign. Because yes, that might be the campaign, but what's all the subsets of data that you're incorporating that just fall into this broad 20% off sale? It just doesn't work, especially as you start to scale these campaigns up, which I reviewed in my last video, which you can find right up here. So before we go any farther, make sure to never change this. So whatever works for you and your business in terms of how you're structuring this out, stick with it so it becomes second nature. I will say it is a pain in the butt to get started. Typing out all this information is difficult. It's time consuming. But once you're able to get this thing going, you're able to so quickly digest the information coming through Facebook's business manager. So let's get into our naming conventions. So I'll put up an example, which you can see right here, but we're talking about tofu, top of the funnel, EN, English language. Then we're going to do what our campaign objective is. So if it's brand awareness, it's brand. If it's website visitors or page views, it's PV. If it's purchases, P-U-R. So we're going to set the objective next. And we do this because it allows you to search for your string of abbreviations to determine, hey, I wanna review all the purchase campaigns. P-U-R, boom, they're all your purchase campaigns. If it's videos instead of images, V-I-D, therefore you're able to search V-I-D and you see all the data coming through on the results for your video ads. So it makes sense and it's difficult to just talk about this, but I will start sharing my screen right now. So we set up a Google Sheet that literally breaks down the ad account of each one of our clients, which you can see right here. Use dashes instead of spaces. That way it'll separate unique attributes, meaning Nike, top of the funnel, US targeting, English speaking, our campaign objective is reach, and we're running the branded ads campaign. So it's pretty straightforward once you're able to see this. And if you're looking for this document, go ahead, click the link in the description. You will have to submit your information for our mailing list, but you can download this cheat sheet, which will help you immensely, I promise. If you guys are liking this video, go ahead, give me a thumbs up. The YouTube algorithm loves it and I love it, which means I'm gonna keep making more videos for you guys. So as we're going through the campaign naming objectives, we're gonna make sure that we're targeting our brand or client or business name, 
our funnel stage, tofu, bofu, mofu. Our location, language, objective, and then the description of what we're showing these people in order to reach the audience. Now we go into the ad set level, which is where it becomes really important that you guys have this naming convention established. You're going to do audience type. So is this an interest, a demographic, a psychographic, a lookalike audience? a custom audience, what is this? Who are these people that we're targeting within this ad set? From there again, language location, super easy, U-S-E-N, done. Now we get a little more technical because we wanna make sure that we're establishing the placement of these ads. So as you start getting better at Facebook ads, this is going to be important. We only wanna show certain placements with certain creative assets. So this is where the placement comes in. IG, IG story, IG feed, FB feed. I mean, it's right column, RC. It really becomes easy once you abbreviate these things, but it's important to run these ads specifically to the locations, and you need to make sure which ad sets are running to which locations. And it sounds like I'm rambling, but it's complex in nature and you want to be specific because Facebook ads are great. And once you start to scale and optimize, you determine which placements are actually most effective for your ads. So all this information needs to be broken down within the naming convention. From there, we're going into placement and platform. So like I said, placement, right column, newsfeed, story, etc. Optimization, what are we optimizing this ad set to accomplish? Meaning again, the objectives. If it's page views, if it's purchases, if it's add to carts, initiate checkouts, add to wish list, setting that objective right in the ad set level so that you can quickly identify which ad sets are converting. And then an audience description, a quick overview of who they are age, demographic, that type of information, or if it's a lookalike audience, where are you pulling that information? Which custom audience are you using for that lookalike audience? Now, we get into the ad naming, which is another naming convention that we need to set up. And again, if you guys are liking this video, if you find it useful, give me a thumbs up. And if you really like it, hit that subscribe button. We're growing about a seven to 10 subscribers a week right now. I'd love to see that number go up. So when it comes to the ads, we wanna start with the date. What is the date that you launched this? And there's a number of reasons for that. Most importantly, you're able to track how long you're testing these different creative assets. Then we're going into the creative. So carousel, image, video, dynamic creative, whatever you're running needs to be included within that set. Then we're doing a copy description. So just pull out some high level information about the headline and the body copy that you're using for these ads. Once again, the purpose of this is to determine which ones are most effective. And it's important to make sure when you're building out your URL parameters that you're not leaking different information based on these. So they all have to be singular. You can't have duplicates over and over again because then your analytics data will show skewed information. So make sure to follow this. And again, to make life a little easier for you, I have a link in the description to this document. Submit your information, join our newsletter. You'll see my face even more. And this will help you immensely when you are creating your Facebook ads campaigns, ad sets, and ads to create a great naming convention that you can stick with that you can use over and over again. Guys, my name is Chris Morano. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this video interesting. Make sure to subscribe to my channel and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, and follow our blog, bluewatermarketing.com forward slash blog. And we'll see you guys next week. Peace.